Hey guys, there's a couple things I want to talk to you about on this week's video. We're going to do this video just a tad bit different. We're going to kind of change up the content just a little bit. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you guys for uh, watching this series. Um, I know I've said it more than one time, but you guys make this possible for me to do this series for you every week. Um, it shows me a little bit of encouragement when I read your comments. And I see how many people comment back on my personal pages from Instagram to Facebook to YouTube. Um, it, it's amazing how this community works in this in this farming style community. And I just want to say thank you. And that comes from the bottom of my heart. Um, now, on this series, when I agreed to do this uh, with Bootstrap Farmer over a year ago now, um, I wanted this to be real. I wanted to show the goods, I wanted to show the bads, and I wanted to show the mediocre times. And honestly, there is a lot of good. There is amazingly amount of good. I've met some great people and um, had some good laughs with people, and now that I consider them some of my best friends. Um, so that's pretty amazing when you can meet people and uh, become friends. And then I've had a lot of the bad. Um, I've had a lot of issues with varieties of stuff that I've chosen and um, just the way things were set up. You know, there, there's no right book for this, that there's a wrong or a right or whatever. You know, this is just market gardening or gardening or backyard gardening or um, pandemic gardening, whatever you want to call it, whatever you're doing, that's cool. I mean, as long as you're out there getting your hands dirty, it really doesn't matter what you're doing, how big or how small. But I do want to talk about a couple things that I want to hit on. I'm going to make this video super short this week. Um, it has been well over 100 degrees here for, it seems like, years in a row here. And I know there's other people in the south um, that have this type of temperature and stuff. But up here, we don't really have that many over 100 degree days, especially days that we've got 120 degree uh, heat indexes. That does a lot to the specific varieties of uh, vegetables or plants or flowers or anything that you're growing. I have found out really quick that some of the varieties that I chose are not very heat tolerant to that, especially grown inside of high tunnels. Um, the, the new high tunnel back there, the all metal uh, kit back there, you guys know that we did have tomatoes planted in there. I think we had 150 tomato plants planted on the back side and then we had some cucumbers in between there. Um, I lost all of it. I lost, I think there was 45 snacking cucumbers, and then I lost over 150 tomato plants all in the same week. And uh, it was all due to heat stress. Um, those tunnels got well over 120, 130 degrees. Sometimes it even topped my thermometer out, which is, I think it tops at 135. Um, I don't have any electricity up there. And uh, I, there's plans to have it up there, but right now I don't have it up there. So what I've had to do is I've had, I've had to improvise, um, get some vents in, stuff like that to try to cool it down. I think I now have that under control where my tunnels are now about 90 to 100 degrees, which you still may say is hot, but it has literally uh, made a big improvement. So I talked to my Johnny's rep and uh, we discussed some of the varieties that I chose and she gave me recommendations on what I should try next year. I did start over on my cucumber, so I do have a different style of cucumber that is used to the high heat, used to the high humidity, and it is specifically grown for greenhouse varieties. So I've got those started now. So we're going to have a late season crop of cucumbers, but that's okay with me. Uh, over your shoulder there, I still have um, three rows of what I call field cucumbers, um, which is your basic cucumber that you see anywhere. Um, so we still have cucumbers there. I just lost those higher end, um, more specific style cucumbers that I was trying to grow up there to get a premium price out of. So I lost those. Lost of tomatoes. So for the first year in four years, I will not have slicer tomatoes this year. And uh, that kind of hits my pride because we're kind of known for our salad and we're known for our big one pound to pound and a half tomato slicers here. And I have nothing to offer in market. Um, you may say, well, that's okay. You know, my tomatoes didn't do good either. But I understand that, but when you grow 1,500 to 2,000 pounds of tomatoes a year and you charge a very premium price for that, you know, you're taking thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of revenue that's gone. So for money that I had planned in the fall to do updates on the farm, add another tunnel, buy more tools, uh, expand the business a little bit, um, now that's gone. Um, 
And so, you know, I, I got over that. It took me about two weeks to get over my pride on that. And I worked through that. And then um, I had some issues with my lettuce and my Salanova here in the DIY tunnel. And so I reached out to Johnny Seeds once again. And uh, Kim is my rep there. Uh, if you guys didn't know, no matter who you are, you have a rep for your area. So you can more than reach out to them. They will help you pick varieties. They will talk you through issues. They are awesome. That company is phenomenal uh, to work side by side with. Um, and she she reaches out to me and emails me stuff or texts me stuff all the time about new varieties getting ready to come out, what I, she thinks I should try next year. It's been great to have that tool in my back pocket. My lettuce started looking pretty bad. <clears throat> um, and I know it's heat related. Lettuces don't really like to grow in the heat, but it can be done. Ray Tyler does it all year long in Tennessee. So if he can do it, I can do it. Had a lot of issues. It started looking pretty wilty, uh, which you understand, you know, and you want to throw a little water to it and stuff. But then it started to get some weird colors. Um, it almost looked like somebody took a pepper shaker and just shook pepper all over it. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. And I reached back out to a couple um, of people and, and they said it looks like mold or it looked like something. I was like, OK, you know, I have overhead watered that a couple times a day just to keep the heat off the leaves to keep it from wilting, even though I use drip. So I quit using the overhead on it and just uh, precisely used the drip. Got worse. It went over to my head lettuces. Um, and, you know, that's my bread and butter or my salad. I'm, you know, I'm known for tomatoes and salad. So now you've wiped out my tomatoes and now you're going to wipe out my salad. Well, when I reached out to Johnny's, uh, luckily here, uh, me living in the state of Kansas, we have a great agricultural college. If you guys have not heard from it, it's K-State. They are phenomenal. They have a whole... Uh, entomology lab they have a whole structure set up with multiple greenhouses and stuff that they actually grow a lot and do trials and then they do insect trials and stuff like that so I grabbed a sample of four or five pieces of lettuce bagged those up called them and I actually drove they're only 40 minutes from me so I actually drove to Manhattan and I delivered it to the lab myself and I spoke with the tech there and within two hours they had results for me and we're going to talk about that more later in the next few videos. But um, yeah, I had thrips. If you guys do not know what thrips are, they are the demon seed of the world. They're almost as bad as aphids or tomato hornworms. I categorize them all into one thing. I got, they said I had a severe case of thrips in my high tunnel. Now, you know, anytime you put any type of bug or anything inside of a condensed area, it's going to wipe it out. Uh, I literally had... 1,200 starts in trays ready to go out into the field. I had 360 head of Salanova planted in the tunnel and 480 head of uh, standard head lettuces in the ground that I lost. So you're looking at over 2,000 heads of lettuce that I lost on top of the thousands of pounds of tomatoes that I was going to, that I was going to use. So literally I pretty much almost lost 100% of my farm um, in the last 30 days. Uh, I'm not saying that to get sympathy. You know, a lot of farms or a lot of YouTube channels or Instagrams wouldn't even post anything like that because it's very detrimental to their pride and possibly customer base. Um, that's not what this series is about. This series is about four seasons of market gardening with me. So you're going to get the good and you're going to get the bad. I've said that more than one time. This is the bad for me. Um, it's a very big pride hitter, but we're going to work through this. I've got a couple good friends that have reached out to me this week. I've got a company that has reached out to me uh, this past weekend that wants to sponsor us and help us get rid of this thrip problem. I've got the entomology professor from K-State that's supposed to reach out to me this week and let me know exactly what variety of thrips. you got to remember, there are 6,000 species of thrips not all of them are good not all of them are bad um but they do like to puncture and suck all the of the sap out of your plants preferably they work on on plants like flowers and stuff but you can get them on lettuces but anyway guys i'm going to end this video here i just kind of wanted to let you guys know where i'm at right now and uh, hopefully things will get better just keep watching the next two or three videos some cool stuff is coming up i'm gonna do a little bit of traveling now that i have a little downtime now I'm going to do a little bit of out-state traveling at different farms and bring that uh, content to you. And uh, we're going to get this We're gonna get this fixed, I promise. Thanks, guys, for sticking around with me, and I'll see you next week.